Hello subscribers and others, David Hoffman, filmmaker. I'm going to tell you another story that I uncovered because of something old that got found when I was a kid. Just like the horsey story, which I hope you enjoy, Jim Key and Bill Key. Here's the story, this book. This book is from 1841 and it's a handwritten diary and it's written by a girl who's part of a group of girls. Now it says here, October 19th, 1841, Miss Ella's room. That's where they're having the meeting. What's going on here? So my mother buys this book and gives it to me as a gift. She says, David, I don't know, it's got 70 pages of handwritten stuff, diary of some girls meeting, 1841, in Concord, New Hampshire. What are they meeting about? And why are they meeting? And what are they talking about? I read the book. And it's just amazing in the things these girls, 18, 19, 17, are talking about. I'll give you a few from the list. What's politeness and why should we be polite? Curiosity. Is it good to be curious? Keep listening. When and where should the truth be told? How far should we as women conform to the customs of society? Does God exist? Should ladies interest ourselves in politics? What is love? And the biggest one of all, marriage. Is it essential? These are subjects in the diary that these girls are talking about. Who are these girls? What's going on in 1841? Are you kidding me? That's 75 years before women had the right to vote. You know what a woman was like at that time. Her duty was to take care of her husband, to be subservient, to be a dutiful, good wife. That was what you would do. You were kind of the weaker sex. These girls aren't behaving that way. I'll tell you what's going on because this became the subject of a major research project for me to understand what was happening in 1841 in Lowell, Massachusetts and in Concord, New Hampshire, just this far apart, maybe 25 to 50 miles. So it's the height of the Industrial Revolution. The Industrial Revolution in New England is woolen mills and thread mills that are incredible. These mills are huge and 75% of the workers are girls and young women. They've been taken off the farms and offered a special deal. They say to the farmer, the father, send your daughter down to us. She will be safe, kept in a dormitory, educated and paid. X percentage of the money will go to you for the family. X percentage will go to her. For the first time, these girls had money. They had money to spend. It happens that the man who built these factories, or the men, built factories based on Christian values, particularly Unitarian Universalist values. That a, a woman should be educated, that she should know how to read, that she should be treated properly and protected. These dormitories were locked at night, huge places. These girls were together for a year or two. They heard speeches, lectures by Thoreau, by Emerson and by women who were traveling the country beginning to ask questions about women's rights and women's duties. Some of them were very radical. They also had reading groups. And one of these Unitarian Universalist folks, I think it was a minister, starts what's called the circle. Have a circle. That's what's in this diary. The diary is called the circle. That's what the first page says. And I look this up and I find circles were a way that women talked to each other about things as though they were sewing, but they weren't sewing. They were just talking. They were just asking questions. They were just, as this diary shows, asking really profound questions. And they then began to challenge the whole system. In 1836, I believe, 1837, there was a strike of these women for better working conditions. They were working 5 a.m. to 7 p.m. Unbelievable noise. No real security for injuries at that time. And these women, these young women, began to fight for their rights. These strikes were very effective. In 1842, one year after this diary was written, Dickens comes to the United States and he is shocked by what he sees. The Industrial Revolution in New England is completely different from the Industrial Revolution in England. In New England, the people are being treated better. There is education. There's it now food and other issues are being offered up to workers. The money is completely different. And he writes, he writes about this. Dickens is thrilled to see the Industrial Revolution becoming what it's becoming in these mills. 
The Mill Girls, as they were called, start a magazine. I think it's called The Lowell Offering. How did they make trouble? Well, history shows that this is one of the major revolutions in workers' rights and in women's rights. Many of these women did not get married. They chose instead to become teachers. And when you look across the country at who the teachers were in the Midwest and in the West and all these cowboy towns, etc., it's largely mill girls coming out of the mills and going West. That's what they're going to do. They also had money to spend. The money to spend changed the retail businesses of these towns who then began to supply women with things that women wanted, not just the men controlled. The fact that they came back to their farms with money with an education, with having been with these other women, profoundly changed them and America. Some of them wrote books. One ran for president. Uh, Woodhull, I believe, was her name. The books were cookbooks some of the time, but very different kind of cookbooks, where the women controlled things much more than they had before. So what happened, because I read this diary, because my mother got it for me, I still love it, love the way it feels, is that I learned about a culture and a time in New England that was really exciting. Would I love to make a feature film on it? Yep. When it's like a cold, rainy day, and I'm discouraged by my creative efforts, I go out there, I open this book to really any page, and I look at the writing. Let's just see here what comes up. She tells here about Miss Curtis having a bad day and they talk about their bad day. I just read the book and I just feel history, time changing, great opportunity. And this is the original, this has got the writing. If you have a pamphlet that sort of says something special, share it with me. If you have a bookstore near you, go in there and search for the old meaningless stuff that nobody sees as valuable until you look at it closely and you look behind it. And what you find behind it is something like what I found here. Take care and thank you.